You know, chipping doesn't have to be that hard. In these next three videos, I'm going to share with you some of the real secrets to making chipping easy. People have told me time and time again this has helped them tremendously on their short game, and I can't wait to share it with you. Let's go and get started. All right, this is going to be a really fun video, and it's actually my personal belief that chipping is easy. Chipping can be one of the easiest things you can do, and I'm going to sit here and hit, you know, it's easy for someone to say, you know, hey, do this and this and this in a video and not hit any shots. I'm going to hit 20 or 30 shots to this one flag from here. It's about maybe 50 feet away or so, and I'll hit some good ones. I may hit a few bad ones, but we're gonna actually see the results as I'm hitting through this. You're gonna wanna make sure that you save this video, put a bookmark on this, make sure you come back to this because we're gonna have an absolute ton of information. We're gonna bust dozens of myths in chipping and talk about one of the best ways to do this through all facets and technique to make it as simple and easy as what I hopefully make it look like today. So let's jump in. We're gonna have a ton of technique, so grab your wedge right now and let's get to it. All right, so here's one of the first things, and with chipping, there's a difference between chipping and pitching, and it's a technique. It's not necessarily how you're doing this uh, or what club you're using, how far away you are. I could chip from right by the green. I could chip from 60, 70 feet from the pin. I could, you know, a variety of, of places. The main difference is whenever I'm chipping, I'm not gonna have a ton of wrist action I'm not really gonna get a ton of lag and then really try to put a lot of aggressive acceleration through there, or I'm not really gonna have a lot of hand and wrist action. There's gonna be a little bit of a flow to this. So as I go back and through, there'll be a little bit of a wrist set. And as I come through a little bit of a wrist set, but it's not gonna be a really aggressive wrist action where I'm getting a lot of hinge like that. That'd be more pitching. So if I was pitching the ball, I might get a little bit more hinge and then let it fold up. Whereas if I'm chipping the ball here, I'm simply gonna rock back and through and keep it pretty simple as I'm doing that. So that's the main thing. I have a really good video on the differences, the full differences between chipping and pitching. So be sure to check that out if you still have some questions on that. So here I'm predominantly talking about chipping, which again is very little wrist set. Now one of the biggest misconceptions I have in this, and I think destroys people's chipping, is we have the idea that we're gonna set up with our feet square we're gonna set up looking down at the ball and it's gonna be kind of a putting stroke. Notice when I do the putting stroke, my hands and arms have to do a lot of the work and my body isn't rotating to create the momentum. If you look at my knees, my knees are staying facing forward and now I have to use a lot of hands and arms to keep that club moving. That's not how the pros are doing it. You won't find any pros doing it that way unless they're just right by the green and just trying to very, barely bump one up there. If there's any kind of distance on it at all, they're not gonna be using that technique. They're gonna let their knees go ahead and pivot. Now, the cool thing about when I let my knees pivot, when I rock back and forth like this, is now my momentum of my body can create the speed. The big muscles, my hips, my shoulders, my body, all that's creating the speed. And my arms feel like they're just kind of swinging with my body, not really adding a, a ton of speed on there in addition to what my body's doing. And notice here as I finish up, two good chips up there, a foot from the hole, look at where my knees ended up. These are definitely not still knees. This is definitely not a putting stroke. And my putting stroke, my lower body isn't gonna move at all and I'm gonna go back and forth. So that's one of the biggest myths out there and I think it'll really hurt your game when you're doing that. If you try to lock the knees on there. Like I said, there are exceptions to this. You're doing a and run with a hybrid. You're chipping with a five iron from 15 feet away. Maybe then truly all you are doing is just popping it up there but with any kind of distance, that's not really gonna work. It's not gonna be consistent. The second piece of this, if I want my hips and knees and all that to move and create the momentum, I need to set up with my feet fairly open. I like to have a really narrow stance. I like to have my right foot a little bit forward toward the target, going this way. I like to have my left foot definitely open. So I'm not square like this, I'm opening it up. What that does is that automatically turns out my knee, it turns out my hip socket, and now that's much, much easier to come in and rotate through to the target and create that momentum with my body. That way my arms can just swing with that. That way it's very, very easy. Just like you're tossing a golf ball up there. Not very difficult at all. Probably not gonna hit three better than that. So it's all downhill from here. Um, with that, another feeling I'll have on this is like if I'm taking my right hand and I used to say all the time, and I still do sometimes, that chipping is as easy as taking a golf ball and just tossing it up there. But when I toss a golf ball, my hips open up, my body opens up, and then I just toss it this way. You don't see anybody toss a golf ball, at least somebody that's gonna to toss it very well, would do that and throw it across their body. It's gonna open up and then you toss it. 
Actually, I think chipping is easier than tossing a golf ball. No way I could th toss three golf balls up there within two feet of the hole. It would almost be impossible. So if you learn to get the right technique, this chipping action is actually easier than tossing a golf ball. That one's a hair short, not my best, but hey, every once in a while you're gonna hit some bad ones. That's one thing too to, to always keep in mind when you're doing this, you're gonna have some bad shots. No matter if you're the best chipper in the world, you get a bad lie, you get uncomfortable, you're not playing that well that day. I'm gonna hit some thin ones. I'm gonna chunk some chips. It doesn't mean you're a bad chipper. It just means that's golf. Golf's a difficult game. So don't hold yourself to an impossible standard where I have to get all of them up and down. You're never gonna get all of them up and down. It's just not gonna happen. Even the best pros in the world, and those guys are good, are maybe getting 70% of these up and down. So from there, where do we move on? Variety of clubs. I could actually hit this with a lot of different clubs. And the main thing is that I just wanna make sure I use the, the same technique with all these. So let me take, what I'll usually use is a, a gap wedge, a 56 and a 60. So let's start out with my gap wedge. Now, when I have less loft on this club, so that was a 60 I was just hitting there. When I have less loft, that's gonna lower the trajectory of this shot. It's gonna make it run a little bit more. It's gonna take a little spin off of this. So if I use my, my gap wedge here, it'd be my 50 degree wedge, as I bump it up on the green, it's gonna roll out a little bit more. Now, if I hit it clean, it's still gonna have a decent amount of spin on it. So you see how that wanted to check up. It's just not gonna check up quite as much as what my 60 did. It's also gonna come out a little bit hotter. So as you start to hit these, you're gonna to have to make a slightly smaller swing so that it's gonna not go way past the hole or anything. So that was a pretty good one there. Again, it's the exact same technique. I'm rotating my knees, I'm letting everything swing back. The momentum is coming from my body. My arm just feels like it's kind of tossing the club, just like I mentioned tossing a golf ball up there to the hole. That's my gap wedge, completely fine. If you want to use a pitching wedge, a nine iron, that's completely fine. I just don't do that that much because I find that I like to have a little more spin on it. And if I get a little bit more spin, I have better stopping power. So it's going to hit one, one hop and then stop by the hole rather than me having to judge how many feet it's going to roll out or where it lands. If it lands on upslope or flat spot, it's going to kick different ways. I'd rather land a little farther. Here's my 56 degree wedge. And again, the same thing, exact same technique, feet close together. One reason I put my feet close together, you can imagine my feet are touching, very easy to rotate. Like this, very, very easy. If my feet are really wide, now all of a sudden it gets tougher to rotate. I actually have to move my feet to rotate, which obviously I'm not gonna do that on a chip shot very much. So the closer together your stance, the easier it's gonna be to hit these little chip and pitch shots. That's my 56, so you see I carried it a little farther. Oh, finally got one to go in, so that was pretty cool. You notice it carried a little farther than my gap wedge, had a little more spin on it, a little bit of higher trajectory. Um, one of the things that I get asked all the time too is where do I put the ball position? I think that's another big mistake that people talk about and they get wrapped up of where the ball is in relationship to your feet as far as back foot or front foot or whatever, and they're not looking at it from something set every single time. So the way I like to think about it is if I set up to this little chip shot here. Again, my front foot's open. If I take my back foot away, so if I, let's just say I'm just looking at my left foot here, I've completely removed my back foot. If I'm looking at this golf ball, it's probably around my left heel, right? So it's, it's on my left heel and that's pretty far up in the stance. If my foot was square, my feet were square, it's gonna almost be on my front toe there for a pretty stock chip shot. If I wanna hit it a little lower, maybe I move it back a little. I want to hit a little higher, maybe I move it up a little, but it's not greatly different on any of those. I'm probably moving it back an inch or two, forward an inch or two is about all I'm going to do. I'm never going to do this. If I put it way back in my stance, now I'm going to chop down in the ground. You're not going to see these clean hits like I had there. If I move it way up, all of a sudden that's way up there. I feel like I got to get hands and arms. It's really not going to work. So if I'm looking at it just in relationship to my front foot, it's off the heel. Also, if I'm looking at it in relationship to my back foot, they're so close together. If I remove my left foot, it looks like it's on my back foot too. The mistake I see players making is they hear this uh, saying, put it off your back foot, which is exactly what I'm doing. This is off my back toe, but they use a wide stance. This is where my ball position would be if I had a wide stance, right? In the middle there. What the mistake is, is people hear that advice, put it on your back foot. They use a wide stance and they say, okay, well, I got to put it on my back foot. All of a sudden I'm way up here 
and I am just chopping down into this thing. You know, I'm not even going to hit one from there because it's going to mess up the turf where I'm hitting these good shots. I'll hit one from over here, though. I put it in the back of my stance, and all of a sudden I'm hitting down, and I chunk it. It dribbles off to the left, dribbles off to the right. I could do anything with it. Lay the side over it. That's a tough shot. I would not be able to hit five or six in a row as nicely as I've hit some of those if I'm playing it off my back foot with a wide stance like that. So in a nutshell there, what I'm really saying is that the ball position relative to your feet only works as if your feet are close together or your feet are set up the way the person's telling you to set up. If I put my stance wider or I put my weight way to the left, all that gets weird. So basically what you wanna do is you're gonna have your ball position pretty much in the middle of your stance, feet close together. And now as you rotate back and through again, it's gonna be pretty easy to just clip that nice and clean. Got that one a little hot. So just rolled out a little extra again. You're not going to hit them all perfect. If you're going to say, I'm going to have a tap in every time from here, you just need to pick a different sport because it's, it's just not going to happen. So let's go over a few more things I think really cause some trouble in people's chipping. All right, so now I've got an awesome drill to help you hit the really clean, crisp contact. And you'll notice I've probably hit about eight balls or so here, and I haven't really taken any kind of a divot. I've brushed the turf. I've hit some soil or hit some, hit some grass, but I haven't really dug down there and taken a divot, and I haven't really dug that leading edge down into the ground. Now there's something you can do, obviously the technique we talked about rotating on through using the momentum of the body, that makes it way easier. But there's something you can do to make this even more precise. And I was actually, you know, this really hit home for me. I was uh, working with a player at the US Senior Open and we were paired with Tom Pernice in a practice round. And he uses a 60 degree wedge with almost no bounce on it. He had like four degrees of bounce and most of that bounce is shaved off the back. So he's really using no bounce at all. And he was doing the same thing with the 60 degree wedge. He was even hitting low shots that didn't go very high in the air, low skippers that didn't take a divot at all. And that was pretty surprising that he was able to do that without hitting that leading edge into the ground. And I knew there's a great drill that can really help you do this. And, and here's how I'd go through that if you wanna keep, hit it nice and clean like they're doing. So let's use three tees. Number one is gonna be a tee I set up about an inch off the ground. Number two, I'm gonna set it up about a half inch off the ground. And then number three, I'm gonna set up a tee just barely above the grass. So the head of the tee is just barely sticking up off the turf. So three different tee heights. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit five shots on each one. And the goal is that I'm gonna clip just the tee only. No turf, no grass. I'm not gonna to touch a blade of grass and I'm also not gonna swing over top of the tee and miss. That's gonna allow me to get the depth or how high I'm swinging over this grass really, really fine tuned. And if I can do that, then I'm gonna be really precise with these shots. Now, the way to make this work, and, and obviously you're probably thinking, well, Clay, if I could do that, I wouldn't be watching this video. There would be no point, right? So the way you're actually gonna make this happen technique-wise is what I was talking about with the body. Imagine that I was to grab just with two fingers, just barely holding onto this club, really, really loose in my left hand, and I just let, again, the momentum of my body swing back and through and move that club around. So I'm really not holding on with anything here. I'm just letting my body momentum swing on through. That's the only way you're gonna be able to make this work. You have to be nice and soft and let the momentum of your body clip those tees, right? And I'm able just to take a couple fingers in my left hand. I got a little bit of grass there, that was no good. But for the most part, I'm able to take just two fingers on my, my grip and then let the momentum of my body hit that T on a regular basis, because that's gonna be a much more precise way of doing it. So again, the keys to that are a little open stance. I can't think about keeping my body toward the target or toward the ball. I have to let my body rotate toward the target as I come on through. That's gonna get that momentum and that softness that's gonna be required to hit the T pretty clean. Now, when you're looking at those low shots, and I'll show you those in a minute, that's not coming from taking the loft off necessarily that's coming mostly from hitting it so clean that the face grabs and keeps the ball low. And I'm gonna go over that here in a second too, how you hit a low, medium, and high. But first, before we get to that, again, I'm gonna hit five swings. Now I want you to hit five swings, starting with the one inch tee. You're gonna do everything we talked about here and you're feeling like you're just tossing that club toward the target. You see that I can clip that tee every single time. One inch is pretty easy. You'll be able to do that right away. The half inch gets a little bit tougher. Every once in a while you'll miss the tee. Every once in a while you'll brush a little bit of the grass, which you don't want to do. I'm trying to get just all tee like that. That was perfect, I love that one. Again, all tee there. So if I do that five times, now I'm gonna to move to the one, this is pro caliber here. I really struggle with this one 
not the easiest, but you do a little bit of this every day, you're gonna become a master of the short game. So just the head of the tee is all that's sticking up over the grass. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. So I missed over top of that one. Missed over top of that one, pretty tough. And I got that one, clipped the head of the tee. I may have got a little bit of grass though, but that's pretty good. Five reps on that. And then finally, you're gonna do five reps where you just brush the turf. So now I'm brushing the turf, but I'm not digging down into the soil. You can hear that skipping. You can hear that nice clipping of the grass, but I'm really not jamming down into it. The cool thing about this, you can practice it right from your living room. Get out on the, on the carpet, it's not gonna hurt at all because you're not chopping down into it. And just see if you can barely brush the surface of the grass or the surface of the carpet without digging down into the hard part of the carpet. And that'll be exactly the same as what you're doing when you're chipping. So that's good stuff there. Now, let's move on to, I hear a lot of times, how do I control the trajectory of these? How do I hit these shots higher or lower? That kind of thing. Let me go over that. The main thing is, if I hit this club directly into the ball and no grass gets in the way, it's gonna grab pretty good and it's gonna spin. If I start hitting too much grass, chopping down into it, you see blades of grass pop up like that, it's tough to really hit it clean enough to have a lot of spin on it. So the cool thing about this is you don't have to be a pro to do this. You practice the right way, you're gonna get pretty daggone good. So here, I'm gonna hit a low spinner, try to hit a low spinner. In order to do that, I'm still gonna set up with my 60 degree a little bit open. So the face is a little bit open. This is actually says 58 on the bottom, it's bent to 60. So the face is a little bit open. And then from there, I'm gonna have the hands a little forward as I'm coming to contact. And again, I'm imagining just like I'm clipping that head of that T off the turf. That's all that I'm gonna touch. And there, nice low spinner. Just didn't hit it hard enough. Talked too much, not enough hitting. Good shot, just didn't swing quite hard enough when I did that one. And you'll see just a little tiny bit of dirt came on the face there, not much at all. So I'm gonna wipe that off. In order to get that spin, you really have to have a super clean club face. So again there, a little bit open with the 60, little forward shaft lane, and I'm really gonna try to hit that low spinner just like that one. I like that one a lot and you see how that checked up right when it went to the hole. So that's a 60 degree wedge, has 60 degrees of loft on it, but because I'm hitting it so clean and there's no grass between the ball and the club, it's gonna stay low. I do have a little forward shaft lane though. If I took enough grass, took too much grass, and some grass got, between, got wedged between that ball and the face, it acts like grease or oil, something really slick like slime, and the ball shoots up the face, it goes higher with no spin. So if I really wanna spin those, again, it's all about how cleanly you can hit those, just like we did in the T-drill, and that was another really clean one. You can see it want to bite right as it's getting up there by the hole. So I'm happy with those. Now, if I wanna go a little higher, all I'm doing here, exact same technique, nothing changes other than I open the face a little tiny bit more, not much, just slightly more. And when my momentum of my body is coming through, instead of momentum, continuing to accelerate and getting a little forward shaft lean, my momentum's gonna be a little softer and I'm gonna let that club face release a little bit. Again, as long as I'm not digging down into the turf, I can get that ball to go a little bit higher. That was a really nice one, just a little hard is all, but you see how it wanted to really grab for me. I can get that ball to go a little higher and I'm not gonna have to worry about sliding under it or doing anything like that. So the only difference there in those two shots with that 60 degree wedge was a little bit more open with the face and not much, I'm just barely more open with it. And as I come through, I'm letting that club release a little bit, a little slight bit more. So let's try one more there. There's a nice high one. That one's gonna be pretty good. It stopped right by the hole. Again, I'm hitting it clean enough, not taking enough grass, hitting that ball first to where it's still gonna have good spin on it, even if it gets a little higher up in the air like that. Now the flop shot, and I'll tell you, Tom Pernice can really hit some short game shots. I saw him hit a flop shot from about this distance that actually backed up. I still hadn't been able to do that one yet. But the way that he's doing this and the way these pros are hitting these really crazy flop shots is the exact same technique we're using there. They're not letting that club thump the ground very hard. It's just coming through and barely brushing that turf. And what's happening is it's not getting any grass between the face and the ball, and it gets a lot of friction between that. Now I will say, this is not the highest margin for error. I would much rather take my gap wedge, my pitching wedge, hit a nice little bump and run up there than I would hit this flop shot. The only time I'd hit this flop shot is if 
the pin's, the slope is running away from me, this pin is tucked and that's the only way I can get it to stop. If I have that though, I open up that face a little bit more, significantly open here, almost like it's up toward the sky. And again, I'm gonna feel like I just brushed that turf nice and aggressive and it should get a decent amount of spin on it. That was pretty good. But what happened is, spun it good, see how it checked up right away? But that's the problem you run into with a flop shot. Very difficult to control your distance. That one went 15, 20 feet by just because it's a tough shot. If you want to get to where you can hit flop shots within five feet of the hole every single time, never going to happen. Not even the best players in the world. You will see the best players in the world hit a lot of good flop shots, but it's hit or miss. Again, let's try another one. Face open, nice and clean coming through here. That was a really good one. And that one stopped dead, spun right by the hole, and now I got a six inch one. That one makes you look like a million bucks. The one before makes you look like you don't know what you're doing. So the flop shot is definitely the low margin for error shot. Now let's try a few out with ball position. And again, on that flop shot, one thing I didn't mention there is if I'm really trying to hit one low and running, I'm gonna play it about an inch back. So if this is my standard trajectory shot. I'm gonna play it here for that low running shot. And again, I'm gonna rely mostly on the cleanness of contact to get that to, to go out nice and low. And that one did that. Barely got up in the air, had nice spin on it. That's great. For the standard trajectory shot, it's just gonna be the normal position like I talked about. For that flop shot or a higher one, I'm gonna put it a little more up in my stance. So this is normal here. I just scoot it a little bit up. I like to have my right foot a little bit more back in the flop shot, but it just depends on how you wanna play that. So it's a little bit farther up, again, when I'm hitting that flop shot. That was a nice flop there. That's about as good as I'm gonna be able to do one. You see, I still clean enough to where it flew up there and then it stopped, it didn't roll out very much. Here's another question I get all the time when it comes to not digging, just being able to brush this turf every single time. There's basically two ways that you can do this. Now I mentioned for me that I really like to keep everything opening up. And what happens when you open up is that you shallow out the angle of attack and you shallow out the swinging of your club. Here's what I mean by this. If I keep my hips square, so my belt buckle's facing toward the ball, my shoulders are facing toward the ball, and I swing toward this. This is almost like that putting stroke I was talking about. I keep my head down and I do this putting stroke type action. What I'm having to do to move the club is all hands, arms, and shoulders. It's a lot of action moving across my body and it's very inconsistent. Lock your hips. Here's what I want you to do. Set up against a wall. Put your rear end against the wall. Swing back and forth without letting your rear end come off that wall. You're gonna notice two things. One, I can't swing very far through without chicken winging. Even if I try to rotate on through, it really doesn't work. I'm gonna chicken wing. Number two, I'll feel a lot of hands and arms working through the shot. A lot of wrist, a lot of stuff where I feel like I'm muscling it. Now the right way to do this, again, is to feel like you're opening up and coming through the shot. If I do that, what's gonna happen is at contact, my hips are actually open a little bit. So my belt buckle would be about 45 degrees open. Now I'm swinging toward this target or this direction. If I take my hips and I put them back towards square, so the relationship between my hips and the direction I'm swinging, and I turn my hips back towards square, look how the direction my club is swinging is actually 45 degrees to the right. So when you're hitting a short game shot, you're actually doing this. This is the swing. It's a 45 or 30 degree swing to the right of your body. That's very shallow. I couldn't dig that into the ground if I wanted to. But try doing that and you'll see it's very difficult to really do anything other than just to barely brush the turf when you're doing that. Very different than keeping the body square and trying to muscle it. So if you do this properly, what's gonna happen here is that your body's gonna open up and I have this sensation that I'm letting this come from the inside and swing this way. As my body opens up, look how that's gonna square that up toward the target. So when my body's open and that club's going toward the target, that's the same as my body being square and me coming to the inside. And that is so hard to chunk from that position. You're gonna just have to come in nice and shallow. So that's the first key. I really wanna make sure my body opens up and I really wanna feel the sensation. Again, I'm doing that tossing motion. My body's open, I'm tossing this way. That'd be no different than my body being square and me tossing that way. That's the way you wanna have it happen. If I wanna toss to the camera here, I'm gonna do it this way. I'm not gonna go like that and push across my body. Nobody's gonna be accurate that way. So I've gotta get that body opening up. That's the first one there. Let me go ahead and hit another one. Again, I've been talking too much. I'll probably do terrible on this one. Yeah, big time chunk there, not very good, but you can see it still rolled out. Not a terrible one. I can probably make that putt if I hit a nice putt. So even when you mess up, if you have the right technique, it's gonna be pretty good. You're not gonna really hit one bad. 
So again, let's try one more. I'll open up the body, let that tossing action happen. Yeah, again, they're pretty good. A little short and just hit a little too much grass, but completely fine. Now, another way that players will keep from hitting way too much ground and digging is they will feel like they get a lot of extension. So as they come through, their upper body is back this way. That's completely fine. That's not particularly my style. I like to get a little bit more to the left to shallow it out. But if you'd like to get a little bit more of that, you know, extension type move like this, that's completely fine. I nipped that one good. Just need to hit a little farther, but that was nice and clean contact with the turf. So no matter if you're gonna extend or if you're gonna rotate to the left, either one of them works. You just gotta make sure that you don't stay square and try to muscle it across your body. I also get a lot of questions on the grip. And one thing that I like to, to do is either take your normal grip and I like to set up a little more vertical so my upper body is more up and down. I don't wanna have a lot of tilt away like I would in a full swing. I'm gonna be more vertical here and that will put my right hand in position that's a little more on top of the club like this. That's gonna keep the club from closing down and me flipping at it. So I don't wanna be here, my right hand under. That's too much under like this. It's gonna to be tough to open up when I do that. I wanna be more vertical with my body, have the right hand on top. Now I can choke up a little bit if I want. A lot of players will start to choke up on the shaft a little bit. I'm not a huge fan of that, even though it will work. I just hit one there where I choked up on it and actually hit it nice and clean, just didn't quite hit it hard enough. But if, if I choke up on it, I think that's more of a result of trying to not dig when you have improper mechanics. Now it's different than just a little hybrid, you know, punch shot where you're on the collar of the green, you know, a little tiny shot. That's fine to choke up on it. You can use different technique. But I find most players, and again, it's not, it's okay if you want to choke up, but I find most players have bad technique, everything's square, they're muscling it, they start chunking a few, and now all of a sudden, if I really choke up on it, it makes it easier not to chunk. Well, if you get your stance a little open, let your body open up, let the club toss, you're not gonna worry about chunking as much. You're not gonna have to choke up on it as much as you want to. But by all means, if you like to choke up on it, and I'll choke up on this one quite a bit, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. If you use the right technique, you can do just about whatever you want. Although that feels really weird to me. I pulled it about five feet to the left. Uh, you can use whatever technique you want, and it's still gonna be pretty pretty clean as you do that. Now lastly here, let's talk about one little trick that I like to use again if, to make it come in nice and clean. If I focus on my left shoulder here, as I'm coming through contact, so again, I just wanna brush this turf. I don't really wanna hit much of anything at all. I wanna feel like this shoulder comes back around away from my body. So if somebody was had a rope and they were standing behind me and they pulled that rope, it would pull my shoulder back this way. That allows that to open up and the momentum of your body to let that club swing on through there. I'm really not using, I can even take this club with just a couple fingers here and I can just let my body open up and it's gonna, momentum of that club is gonna swing it on around. That's very, very good there. If I keep this shoulder still, again, that would be the locked in front, arms going like this, that shoulder still, I have to chicken wing and collapse up. So for me, I like to think of it as that left shoulder really coming around to the left and that's gonna help me to stay nice and shallow really not have to worry about making bad contact. And I can hit some pretty daggone good ones there. So that's a nice one there. And then finally, to show you how easy this can be if you're hitting them well, and I'm down to my last ball, the pressure's on here. I've hit all these shots. I haven't hit any terrible ones, but I'm gonna hit one one-handed now to show you how if the momentum of your body is working correctly, you can still hit it pretty clean as you're doing this. Now, if I shank this, it's not gonna look like a very good video. So we'll have to see how good this technique is. Again, I'm really letting everything open up here. I wanna make sure that my club face is clean so the, the dirt or the grass on the ball, on the ground doesn't get in between the ball and the club. And if I do this, I should be able to make pretty consistent contact and get it up there not too bad, even with one arm. So I didn't completely choke on that one and the technique worked pretty good. One of the questions I get all the time is, what's the difference between a pitch shot and a full swing. What do we need to do differently? And how are we gonna be accurate with those pitch shots? How are we gonna get a lot of power with our full swing? And the main thing comes down to releasing the club versus keeping the body and the club moving through together. So in a full swing, the idea is that we're gonna have a lot of lag and then our body is actually gonna decelerate and our club is gonna release past our body. So if we're looking from down the line view, if, my, if I hit my ball and I come into the release as my hands are coming on through, you're gonna see that my shoulders are staying in their posture 
and my arms are basically releasing almost perp or parallel with my shoulders. So if I was to stand straight up, my, my club releases this way, kind of going back into the left. That's from me letting that club really roll on over release and to get that good speed coming through the shot. So my body slows down to let the club whip past as I'm coming into the release. Now the, the pitch shot is quite a bit different. So you'll see in good pro players, I'll show you a picture of Tiger Woods here up on the screen from when he was playing really well. And you can look at this for a lot of pro players. As they pitch, we're gonna keep the body, the club, the arms, all that moving together. So imagine everything just kind of moving through as one unit as we're coming on through. So the difference here is how we're gonna finish. So as I come through to my pitch finish, instead of staying in my posture like I did with a full swing, I'm gonna let my shoulders level on out. You're gonna notice that my club stays a little bit more vertical. So here is the release with the full swing. Here's the release with the pitch shot. And you can see this, this picture with Tiger Woods I'm showing. Look how the club is more vertical. Look how his shoulders are more level with the ground compared to the full swing where his shoulders are more tilted. And then also, I'm gonna feel like my left elbow and the left side of my body are working together. So those are coming through the shot. I'm gonna have a little bit more rotation together with the body and the arms. So the sensation you're gonna get there is as we come through, the left arm, left elbow on the side are gonna stay a little closer together as I come to this release position versus letting that roll on over and separate out away from my body. So focus on those three key factors. We're gonna do about 100 reps with this. Number one, I'm gonna feel like my shoulders are a little bit more level with these pitch shots. So I'm coming on through, my finish is more level. Number two, I'm letting the club finish more vertical. So I'm not gonna let it roll on over this way. It's gonna be more vertical. And number three, my left side of my body and my elbow are kind of working through as one single unit. Now I wanna make sure that I keep my grip nice and light, that I'm accelerating through the shot. I don't wanna slow down. I wanna keep my body and my club moving through together as a unit. And that's gonna help you to get these good clean pitch shots. Let's go ahead and try a few out. There we go, hit that one nice and clean. You see it checked up a little bit. If I hit it a little bit harder, then I'm gonna get a little bit more speed on there. But that actually gets a little bit more spin. You notice how that ball hit one time and then immediately checked up. I just gotta go a little bit harder, but because I'm letting that club and the body move through together, it's very easy for me to come down and make solid contact and get spin on the ball. Rather than rolling it on over, I'm gonna lose a little bit of that spin, take some spin off. So I wanna imagine that this club is working through the shot and staying very vertical with the shaft as I'm coming all the way on around. Practice those key checkpoints. About 100 repetitions, just going nice and slow, pausing in the finish position. Second thing, we're gonna go fluid strokes, about 100 practice swings, making sure the body's working together, everything's accelerating through together in the shot. And then third, we're gonna take it out to the course, see if we can get those nice spinning shots like I just hit there. Good luck. All right, guys, I got a really fun video for you. This is really cool. We're gonna talk about a kind of a controversial drill we'll do here in a little bit. This is really gonna help you to stop duffing and chumping, chunking those chip shots. I know how absolutely frustrating that can be. And the stay down is what really causes this for most players. And let me kind of, kind of go through step by step exactly what's doing this for you. We've been taught to put the ball a little bit back in our stance. If we're going to this flag up here, you know, I'm gonna have a fairly narrow stance. Almost the foot on the instep of your right foot is kind of traditional thinking there. We're gonna have a lot of forward shaft lane. And then naturally, we've been told to not really move our knees or our hips at all. Keep all this locked in, very, very stable. Don't let it rotate at all. And then our chest, when we do that, our chest is gonna stay down. So as we come through here, you'll often notice that left arm tends to fold up and almost chicken wing a little bit. And the reason for that is my chest is kind of staying down. The only way to keep the club moving, if my chest isn't rotating, is to use all hands and arms and that left arm kind of folds up like that. So if I do one of these for you, the first one, I'm gonna go ahead and let my arms swing the way they naturally wanna swing when I do this. Ball back, forward shaft lean, very little body rotation, and I chunk it. If I happen to hit it perfect, it could shoot out really fast like that one, my distance control is gonna be very tough. That one, look how steep I came into that. I, I just happened to time that one up perfectly. If I'm a little bit behind it, it's gonna be more like this and I'm not even gonna hit it anywhere. The, ball, the club's just gonna bounce right over top of the golf ball, and that is the most frustrating shot in golf. And again, that comes from a couple of bad ideas, in my opinion. Number one is keeping the body solid and stable and not having it move around. When I do that, my chest tends to not open up and rotate very much, and now I'm all hands and arms. 
And when it gets under pressure, when you need it the most, that's when it's gonna be the toughest. Let's talk, we've talked enough about the bad way, let's go ahead and talk about the correct way now. So here, I'm gonna go ahead and put that ball a little farther up in my stance. I don't want it to be way back. So if I'm looking at just my left foot, it's almost gonna be on the instep of my left foot here at address. Now my right foot's gonna be pretty close there. I'm gonna open up this left foot a little bit too, just to help me kind of pivot and rotate on through. The second piece is, just like I said, I'm gonna pivot and rotate. I'm not gonna have my chest down, body lock solid. I'm gonna go ahead and let this rotate on around. If you were to take a golf ball and simply just toss it, if I asked you to grab this golf ball and toss it to that flag, every single person I've ever asked to do this, they naturally let their hips, their shoulders, their arm, everything open up to the target and you just toss it right on up there. It's really easy to be accurate when you're doing that. We're doing the same thing. That's essentially what a golf swing is. So we got the ball a little bit more up in my stance. Everything is gonna go ahead and rotate on around so I can keep everything moving. If everything keeps on moving, I can let the body pivot swing the golf club. I don't have to feel like I'm doing all hands and arms. It's just the pivot of my body, almost like that tossing motion that we just did with the golf ball there. Now, the last piece there is I wanna finish with my belt buckle and my chest nice and high. If I do the stay down, if you look at my shirt buttons here when I finish, I'm not gonna move my body and I'm here. Look at my shirt buttons, they're, they, they're still pointing down to the ground. If I do it correctly and I let myself pivot and that finish nice and high, look at my shirt buttons now. They've rotated all the way around, my chest is nice and high. And again, what that does, that keeps you from digging into the ground. As my body turns up, so essentially I'm doing this motion, if you're looking from down the line, that'll be me standing up out of that. I'm doing that as I'm rotating, so that club can't dig from there. That upward motion kind of counteracts the downward motion or the downward swing of the club. So let me go ahead and hit a couple shots here for you. I have an extremely tough shot here, very bare ground, and I just have to land this just perfectly right on the front of the green to get that to turn out nicely, but it's not really that hard when you get this rotation motion. Now let's do what I call the superintendent's nightmare drill. Let me go ahead and grab a couple more balls. We'll walk up here to the green, and with this one, it's really gonna force you to use the pivot of your body to get that club swinging. If I use my hands and arms again to try to guide that club, we're gonna have a lot of trouble. So let's just grab a few balls here. I recommend if you're gonna do this, do it on the, the front of your chipping green or the practice area. If you do happen to hit a couple bad ones when you first start, nobody's gonna be too mad at you. But I'm gonna do the same thing here, and I'm just gonna let that club kind of swing a little bit off the ground. And I'm gradually gonna go ahead and make that more like a real golf pitching motion. And I'm barely gonna start to touch the ground here. Notice again, that ball's not too far back. My knees, my hips, my shoulders, everything pivots on through. And as I come through, my chest is nice and high. If I stay down, mm, I'm gonna get handsy. I'm gonna take a big chunk out of this green. Once you get comfortable with that, now you can just go ahead, hit some nice easy shots. That one flew about 20 feet in the air and you'll see there's no mark on this ground. Now, some people think when I do this that I'm talking about timing up, picking that ball perfectly off the ground. I'm not talking about doing that. I can never get that precise. I'm talking about letting the pivot of the body control the depth that this club is swinging. So as long as my chest comes through here high and it doesn't stay down, now I can sweep and barely brush that turf. If you think that it's so difficult that I could never do that, well, let's try it out with one hand. As long as my pivot is good, now I've picked it up with just the left hand. If you don't think the left hand would be hard enough, let's go ahead and try the right hand. Same thing, I can do this all day long because my body pivot is what's actually allowing this club to ground out. I can even hit 40 and 50 yard shots without ever taking a mark here. So you can see there's nothing happening to this green. I'm not some super athlete or anything like that. I'm actually just an average athlete, not even that great. But it's when you use that pivot, that just makes things really easy. So work on those drills, guys. I think that's really gonna help you to be a lot more consistent. Ball a little bit up in your stance. I gotta let my knees, my hips, everything rotate on through. And then finally, as I finish, let my belt buckle and my chest be angled back. That's that upward motion. So if I look at the club head here, that's that upward motion that keeps me from digging into the turf. You're gonna be able to pick all of them clean. Right, so the next thing we need to do is now we need to learn how to get a lot of spin on the ball. I got a great preview of one of my spin shot videos and all you need to do is click the card on your screen or down below click the link in the description and you'll get instant access to that video. I'm going to talk about how we can pair up these nice clean divots now. Now let's learn how to really get that spin on there so we can get that one hop and stop or as we get farther out from the green actually get that ball to spin back. Let's go and get started.
pitch shot could be anywhere from right by the green all the way back to probably 50 or 60 yards or so. And that's what you're gonna to wanna to do uh, when you wanna get a little bit more spin and get the ball a little bit more up in the air. We're gonna go ahead and let the wrist set a little bit more, have a little bit more club action, get the ball to go a little higher in the air with a little bit more spin. So let me go ahead and describe what is a good pitch shot so that you know what you're really going for. And I think we gotta start from there, start from contact. So as I make contact, I wanna be coming in very shallow to the ground. So I don't wanna be taking much of a divot. I don't wanna be hitting down into the ground. As the club releases and we have a flat spot where the club travels very level with the ground for five or six inches on these pitch shots. So when that happens, let me go ahead and exaggerate. As my hand is coming down, my hands are close to the ground. As this club gets closer and closer to the ground, my hands move up. As the club moves down, now you're seeing that I'm having this flat spot.